All right, ladies. So we're going to look at cultural diversity. And when we talk about cultural diversity, right? As most of you would have stated from the previous class, I believe this is the class that, what's her name? That's Gilbert, I believe that's the class. This is the class Gilbert is in? Yes, sir. Yes, you would have alluded to cultural diversity in your response to culture. And so cultural diversity, this is a range of cultures within a society or a plurality of cultures in one society. So for example, in Jamaica, do you consider Jamaica to be culturally diverse? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. And go ahead for me. And what evidence do you have of cultural diversity? in Jamaica, or say the Caribbean, because it's Caribbean studies. So there's evidence in like, or the way we dress because we um, like, in some of the Caribbean countries, like the Chinese or the Indians, you know, they contributed to like the style of clothing or we just have Indians in the society. Um, mm -hmm. like places like Trinidad, they have like different festivals for the different cultures. So like Indians will have like Pagua or Diwali. And yeah. then um, the Chinese, like Jamaica, the Chinese are very prevalent in Jamaica and they have their own festivals and they're kind of a plural society, like it's saying plurality, because they... Mm -hmm keep their culture to themselves and yeah thank you very much and as you mentioned the chinese although here in when you go to the wholesales in jamaica the chinese dress like everybody else however if you go to their cultural event at the chinese benevolent association you'll see that they wear their their cultural you know clothing same thing with the Indians. And we know in places like Trinidad, as I mentioned, and Ghana, they can't, they, well, Trinidad for sure, not Ghana, but Trinidad consider themselves to be multicultural, right? Uh, while here in Jamaica, the dominant culture here would have been the culture that is the like the Afro Jamaican culture. However, when you the Afro Jamaican mixed with some European to uh, those two cultures blend together to form the Jamaican culture. But in terms of having like national holidays for the Indians and national holidays for the Chinese and people, most of the holidays here in Jamaica is really just. Christian holidays, right? So, but at the end of the day, we know for sure that you have Indians living here in Jamaica, you have Africans, you have Europeans, uh, you have people coming from different countries that live here and practice their own culture uh, within the space. One of the perfect places that I've visited that there's real evidence of cultural diversity uh, was in Cayman. And Cayman is like a place where a lot of people go there to work, right? So they have 120 nationalities, over 120 nationalities working in Cayman. And the population is like 50,000. So when I go to visit Cayman, I would go to us. So, all right. So, when it comes to lunchtime, uh, one day I can decide and I say, all right, 
I want some Jamaican food. I can go to a Jamaican restaurant. And next day I said, oh, I feel for Cuban food. I go to Cuban restaurant. Or if you want Italian food, the Italians own their restaurant. And so there's just this level of diversity here. Well, in Cayman. And the churches in Cayman are very much the same. Because in Cayman, you have churches that are predominantly Jamaican, right? So if I'm saying that I'm going to church and the church is predominantly Jamaican, if I decide that I want to have a long day at church, I go to a Jamaican church, right? When I'm in Cayman. If I just want to go to church for church sake, and I don't want to spend a long time. I can't deal with the repetition of the song and the drum beating and the dancing. I just can't deal with that. I just need to go and hear maybe what, a little word of encouragement from the minister. I say, I just pick up myself and I go to the North American church, which is predominantly the members in that church is going to be north american people so a church like that when i was there the the pastor would have started to preach not even start so what they what they did is that they have an open prayer where they pray after they pray they sing two or three hymns after they sing the three hymns the pastor preach for like 30 minutes sometimes 20 to 30 minutes on spot. So by 30 minutes, sermon done. Closing song, go home. So you're in church for like less than an hour. Very good for me, right? So, and if I want to go to the Filipino church, in Cayman, I can also go there because you have the Filipino church and also you have the Cuban church where you have the Cuban uh, in the society. And so that church is mostly Spanish. Well, they preach in Spanish, everything in Spanish. And so that is one example of cultural diversity in Cayman. We in Jamaica have diversity, but not on that level of diversity. When I was also in Barbados, I realized that you had, there's a lot of St. Lucian immigrants in Barbados. And so you had friends would say to me that, you want to come to the St. Lucian church with me? And I say, all right, no problem. And you know, go there, everything in there is St. Lucia, the food, everything. So it's a St. Lucian church in Barbados. Barbados is not as diverse as I would say, Jamaica or Cayman, but at the end of the day, there's some level of diversity, several different cultures within the society. Another place that I visited in the Caribbean that was very, 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 very diverse was uh, the ABC Islands. And this was the very first time in the church uh, so my parents used to live there and I went to visit my parents in, in Curacao and I went to church with my parents. So I was, so the first thing is that the church, everything is translated into three languages, right? So they had the Papimento, the Spanish and the English. So you are in a church sitting beside someone in the church who speak a different language from you. If you can't speak their language, both of you can only maybe shake hand or say hello by waving, but not, they call it, no, you can't communicate with each other verbally because they speak a different language. And within that, congregation uh, they so first they have one song 
in English, then they sing it in Spanish, or they sing a verse of the Spanish and the English. So if they are doing one song, they maybe sing one verse in English, one verse in Spanish, one verse in, in the papament in the papament or English, something to that effect. And the scripture reading, same thing. The sermon, same thing with the sermon. And so, and to my surprise, when I see that, when I go to the church with my parents, I said to myself, no man, but this look like church, I go take an entire day because every single thing in this church is translated. We don't think I can stay here the entire day. And to my surprise, they finished the church in one and a half hours because of the diversity of the church. Everything was done on, you know, time. And in Curacao, that is the nature of the, the churches there. Uh, another experience that I've had in Curacao was where my parents live. Where, where they lived in Curacao and their neighbors were from Haiti, Haitian. They speak Haitian Creole. My parents from Jamaica. There's also Cubans living in close proximity to, to, to my parents. And I realized that Everybody communicates together. They speak different languages, but they are still communicating. They know maybe one or two words from each other language. So if you know that somebody need, you want to ask somebody if the bus pass or what time the bus is coming, they can maybe, you know, know the bus for the, for the peppermint or the different French Creole or whatever. And so the Caribbean, based on our history, is very, very diverse. And some islands are more diverse than others. There are pros and cons when it comes to diversity. But when we look at diversity in the Caribbean, we can look at language, religion, the different customs and traditions, race and ethnicity, and also art forms, which include our musical stuff, right? So if we look at diversity in the Caribbean, we can look at, for example, the different language. We have English, we have French, we have Spanish, we have Dutch. And for all these different languages, there's a Creole version to it, right? Religion, we have Christianity, we have Afro, Christian religion, we have Hinduism, Buddhism, all different types of religious groups in the Caribbean, Judaism, also customs and tradition. There are various different customs in the Caribbean. Some of them are very similar. Some are the same. Race and ethnicity, several different races, several different ethnicities, art forms, music. We have several different types of music in the Caribbean. Now, I want to pinpoint race and ethnicity here for us. And race, race is different from ethnicity. So race refer to a common genetic traits. Uh, such as your physical features, your bone structure, your hair, and all of these different stuff. While ethnicity describe a distinct group within a community, identifiable sometimes by racial background or cultural background. So for example, ethnicity in Jamaica, we have, uh, I should use Trinidad because people in Jamaica tend not to use it again. So in Trinidad, you have Indio Trinidadians, that's a ethnicity. So the ethnicity is based on cultural background, which is the Indio Trinidadians. They are people from East Indian descent. And you also have the Afro Trinidadians, who are people from African descent, or the Asian Trinidadian, which 
actually include both the Indian and also people from the Chinese descent, right? And also we have in Jamaica, we make a lot of reference to Chinese Jamaicans, people who are Jamaican, but they, their cultural background is Chinese. We also have India Jamaicans, although it's not a concept that is, is not popular here because most of the Indians would have, you know, married with, or they don't have that strong dominant Indian community in Jamaica like back then, because most Indian married to, to the Africans, the Afro-Jamaican, and so the pure Indian is not a lot in the country. Chinese is one of the only groups here that would have maintained, they tend to marry and have sexual uh, relations with Chinese only. Uh, so you tend to have that they stick together. And so you can see that distinct Chinese group here. Back then in Jamaica, we used to have a lot of pure Indians, right? So even my cousin, he looked very, very Indian. His father is Indian. His mother is, we call it, is African, Afro-Jamaican. And he comes out very, very, look very Indian, right? If, yeah, come out very, very Indian. And then he now get married to another young lady who is Afro Jamaican and their child, you can see that there's some level of Indian in the child, but it would have diluted significantly. Uh, so that is one example of the of ethnicities here. Another reason why we don't use Afro-Jamaican, we should use it. I identify myself as Afro-Jamaican. Uh, and that's how I identify myself. The, one of the issues with, with people not wanting to call themselves Afro is because they don't want to identify themselves with Africa. Africa is seen as a very bad, bad place in some people. And so there's a lot of discrimination when it comes to Africa. Nobody wants to associate themselves with Africa. Now, ladies, what we're going to do now is that we're going to look at some positive and negative effects of cultural diversity. And I basically, for this, pull out the things from the textbook. So it's in your textbook. And we're looking at this because I believe that the textbook would have looked at this, uh, the positive and negative effects uh, in a very comprehensive way. All right, so I'm going to ask somebody to read this, the positive effects of cultural diversity for me. Somebody please volunteer. Okay, positive effects of cultural diversity. When different cultures mix, new cultural practices are created resulting in interculturation, the, the means by which the creolization process occurs. For example, new genres of music, chutney, soca, have been created in the Caribbean as a result of the merging of culturally disparate musical forms. Other examples are the wide variety of foods, methods of food preparation, languages, dress, festivals, and religious occasions, dances, French, British, East Indian, Spanish, and African. This is the idea of unity in diversity. People who belong to different cultures usually have different ways of thinking and analyzing issues from a variety of perspectives. Different cultures bring different experiences, which can be beneficial as they provide Caribbean society with a sound and vast knowledge base. Thank you very much, Gilbert. So the, what this is saying is that cultural diversity has its positive effect. 
And one of them is that we're going to look at in, enculturation and creolization, not next week, but the following week. Is that our music in the Caribbean is a result of different, of different uh, makeup from different groups. So even reggae, reggae has some form of influence from Africa, things that were created here in the Caribbean, North America. And so Soka is also a perfect example of mixture of the Chutney Soka, which is a genre of Soka, also has the mixture of Indian with African musical form. And so that is very good for our Caribbean when it comes to, 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 to cultural diversity. And also, could you just imagine a Caribbean with just one type of food or just British food alone? I don't like British food. So that would be a disaster. So, but in the Caribbean, even within your own country, you have different restaurants here uh, with different food. I, don't, I know most homes cook the traditional Jamaican food, but at the end of the day, if you want to go say to a restaurant that do just Indian food, they can't find that restaurant. You have the Chinese restaurants, you can go to the Chinese restaurant if you feel for Chinese food. Uh, you have the Italian restaurant if you want to go to Italian restaurant. A perfect example is Marketplace that has uh, several different type of restaurants there that you can choose from. And then also when it comes to cultural diversity, a positive effect is that people are able, people from different groups or ethnicity come together and you have different perspective on issues, which is a positive for the society. Asking someone else to read these two slides for me, please. Different culture. Different culture. You can. Go ahead, Bert, <laughs> then daily goes, will go green and daily after. Different cultural practices among the diverse population can be shared, which means that different cultural groups can learn about each other's culture. This exposure to different cultures can lead to the development of tolerance and acceptance of different groups. People become more broad-minded. Bigotry mm. and discrimination are viewed as unacceptable. People are tuned to recognize discriminatory acts and readily point them out for sanctions to be applied. Thank you very much, Burke. And so another positive effect is, as this would have mentioned, is that if you have cultural diversity in a society, people can learn from each other's culture, right? And if you can learn from each other culture, then you have a broader mind. Your, your perspective on the world is much different. And also you learn tolerance, because tolerance is something that is lacking. A perfect example for me in terms of learning about other cultures, Caribbean cultures are very similar, but different at the same time was in Barbados uh, when I was studying in Barbados. And on the block that I lived, all right, so we have different stuff. I think it's hall. So the hall which I lived on, the block that I was on, I, we had about three Jamaican living there. One, two, three. So even though we, we were Jamaican, we actually come from different backgrounds in Jamaica, right? And then we had persons living on the same. So all of us sharing the same kitchen and bathroom. You had 
boys living from boys who are from St. Vincent, Grenada, California, right? The UK, Trinidad, Guyana. Where are two Guyanese living there? Which other country was there? Belize, right? So we had about two students from Belize living on the scene. So you have all of these different groups there and it teaches some level of tolerance when it comes to culture, to the different groups because for me, once we're on hall, I cook, I, I'm not a great cook, but once I go to university, I have to learn to cook because that was, if I want to eat, I just have to cook because I could not afford to buy food every day. And the, each of us would cook our different meals. So I cook my Jamaican food, the boy from Belize, he would cook his food, the boy from Trinidad, cook his food, all of us cook our different meals, and it helps us to appreciate each other food. Now, when I returned from college, and I said, all right, Belizean have this nice dish, and I tried the dish. I said to my family, I said, all right, I learned this dish in Barbados, and I would share it with them. And the reception was very poor. They said, no, 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 no. It's only Jamaican food we want to eat. My family members, they don't have no level of tolerance when it comes to different culture, right? A perfect example is roti. Jamaica do roti, but in the Eastern Caribbean, people use a lot more roti. When I first come from Barbados, come back from Barbados, and I bring roti for my family member, they say, Lord, what is this? Nobody wants to try it. So if you live in a space with people from different culture, you learn tolerance, you learn acceptance, right? Next point. I think is there. Go ahead. There can be a relatively peaceful coexistence group society, which can tra translate into an enrichment of culture. For example, many are now shared among the various communities to include all culture and nature different and cultural craft items for Hindu items from both Black and Indian culture are on display and sold. Cultural diversity allows of Caribbean countries want to survive. Tourists are intrigued with the Caribbean and enjoy traveling to a place where multiple cultures can be experienced. Thank you very much. So they use so one of the examples of it's a, a positive effect of cultural diversity is if we look at the Hindu festival in Trinidad, uh, uh, where both Afro and Indian culture are on display. And another one is that tourists, tourists love diversity, so it could enrich your experience in a society. You could get money from that. All right, I'm going to go on to negative effect. Since it's in your textbook, you can go ahead and read. Uh, let us discuss these negative effects. Somebody, could you read this for me, please? When different cultures mix, it can give birth to new cultural practices. Therefore, there is a greater risk for it. What's that word? Erasure.
All right, so it seems as if she got some internet problem there. So a negative effect, one of the negative effects of cultural diversity is that when you have different cultures mixing together, people tend to lose their culture. A perfect example is in the Caribbean where the Africans meet with the Europeans, the Europeans and the indigenous people. So most of our African culture are being, were actually erased. We no longer practice some of them, even though we retain some of them. So that is one of the negative effects of cultural uh, diversity. And another negative effect is that when you have cultural diversity, people tend to, there's some level of tension, racial or ethnic tension, Perfect example, Trinidad and Tobago and, and Ghana, where because of the diversity in those societies, everything is seen through the lens of race or ethnicity. All right? And also, people from different cultural or ethnic backgrounds have different and inflexible view concerning lifestyle and religion and politics that can lead to conflict and tension within the society. And so that is one of the issues, right? And another negative effect when you have cultural diversity is that when people speak different languages in the society, that can cause communication problem. As in the case that I would have mentioned about Curso, and people tend to see people's culture in terms of inferior and superior. Some people see their culture as being superior, some see others as being inferior. And so those are some of the, the negative effects. Another one is that educational institutions often establish syllabi that mostly focus on the culture of the dominant ethnic group. So in, in the Caribbean, if you notice that most of what you are studying tend to be things that focus on Afro-Jamaican culture, and you tend to leave out other group from it. And so that could be a negative effect. The dominant group tend to be the one that you focus on. So those are some of the negative effects of cultural diversity. And to close, lady, I want, this is a very popular question that is asked in Cape. Is there a single Caribbean culture? You can argue yes, and you can argue against the point, right? And I would say that the Caribbean has various different really festivals. We have things like Carnival, Krapova, Jankunu. Sorry, Jankunu is actually in the Bahamas. Bahamas, Thais Mac. So these are the different festivals in the Caribbean. We have different music and dance in the Caribbean. And if you realize that Carnival in Trinidad is the very same thing as Krapova, same thing as Jankun and Spice Max, all of them is this, people dress the same way, people dance the same way. It's just different names, right? They play the same music. Soca, Calypso, dance to it, jump up and down, all of that. Same thing with music and dance. We have different music in the Caribbean, but the music are very much similar in terms of their content and to some extent their beats, right? Some topical issues, uh, when it comes to Caribbean music, one of the similarities between Caribbean countries is that Caribbean music, whether dancehall, reggae, soca, calypso, they deal with topical issues. They deal with topical issues in the Caribbean. So they deal with things like politics, they deal with things like social issues like poor people suffering or black pride or something to that effect. And another thing when it comes to Caribbean music is it focuses a lot on sexuality 
and the preoccupation with the female genital, right? All the different musical forms tend to play, play around with that. In the Caribbean, we are very much similar when it comes to folklore and superstitious belief. All Caribbean countries, people have Duffy's story. Everybody tell a Nancy story. To some extent, everybody believe in some form of obi or voodoo. You believe that somebody might obey, somebody might do something to you. Another thing is that folklore birthright, naval scarred, uh, is, you know, some people would bury their naval card. Once a baby is born, they bury the naval card or plant it under, plant a tree with the naval card. When you have the baby, you put either beads, beads around the baby's hand, or for the babies, you put a little red string. Or red string shape. Yes, something like that on the baby, because they say red run away the evil. And even if you don't believe in Duffy, you still do it. People still do it. Even if they say you don't believe in a God, people still do it. And you put the Bible over the baby's head. Culture, which is something that we do, and it is practiced in every single Caribbean country. Another thing is the death, death rite, such as wakes, nine nights set up. Nothing is nice like a nine night. The, we call it now the manish water, right? And so all the different Caribbean countries do the same thing. We have some traditions that we have which is very similar in the Caribbean. We all have fruit cake or black cake that we use for Christmas and wedding. Every Caribbean country do fruit cake and black cake. Every Caribbean country do sorrel, right? All Caribbean country cook rice and peas on a Sunday and soup for Saturday. Sweet potato pudding, very popular. You know those drops? and greater cake that you see they sell in half a tree, every single Caribbean country do it. They might call it different name, but they, it is the same coconut treats that they have. And we have the whole thing about Sunday best, where you wear your best clothes on Sunday for either church, or if you're going to dress up for the, your yard, you know, say, you have your nice, your, your good yard clothes you wear on a Sunday. Your bed before you eat your dinner, you're going to watch out. You, even if you're going to stand outside on your veranda and look outside, you're putting your best clothes on a Sunday and sit down. I don't know if these things are well, the Sunday best is still practiced today, but these are some of the different things. So if I was arguing, if I should get an essay like this, I would argue, this is my personal view, you can argue different to say that each island have their different cultures. I would argue and I would say yes, to some extent we have, we have a single Caribbean culture. Or you could argue and you could say culture different varies on the different islands. And you can use this very same information to show whether the cultures varies or not, right? So ladies, any comment, any question? No, sir. All right, so thank you very much. Please ensure that you go through this PowerPoint presentation to look at positive and negative effects. Read it, it's in your textbook. I've sent the textbook to you. Please read the textbook and so you can familiarize yourself. So if they should ask you an essay on this, you'll be able to answer it. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, sir. Same to you. Same to All you, right. sir.